Steve's passion for rallying and convincing pro libertines to focus their time and resources uh, on fundamental change remains unwavered. Lately, Steve, Steve has become convinced that we have no chance to make any substantive change unless we understand the game, why we are losing and willing to lose. I'm having a grammar lock, sorry. Maybe I had a misspell. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, Stephen has become convinced that we have no chance to make any substantive change. Unless we understand the game, why we are losing and willing to continue to lose, unless we change the game. Stephen's title is Winners Don't Stay in the Game When They Are Losing to Change the Game. Stephen Bailey, Winners Don't Stay in the Game. I need a couple of volunteers to help me out here, at least a few that know how to play the game of Jenga. That means you're playing, Charlie. Get up there. You're the next uh, one. All right. Since 2008, the Federal Reserve has printed trillions of dollars, something on the order of four or five trillion dollars. We've won trillion dollar deficits or over trillion dollar deficits at the federal level. How many of you are convinced that what we have in store for us is severe, if not hyperinflation, because of all this printing? Okay. You're wrong. You're wrong. And to understand why you're wrong and why it's worse than you think, <laughs> you have to, please, please play the game. Play the game while I'm talking. Play the game. So to understand why you're wrong, you have to understand what is our monetary system today. The Federal Reserve system works by creating money and you think out of thin air. And if it was truly out of thin air, it seems like it because you don't know where it came from. So where, where is this money coming from? If it's completely out of thin air, you'd be right. We'd be having hyperinflation. But it's not. New money is borrowed into existence by the Federal Reserve or by its members' banks. Actually, it's the member banks that do this. That means no new money is created unless someone first borrows it into existence. What does this mean? It is the core behind everything in our economic and political system today. It means if you take it on the face of it, that if every debt that existed in Federal Reserve notes was paid back tomorrow, there be no Federal Reserve notes in existence. None. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But this is why, when you look at what happened in 2008, 2007, 2008, 2009, why things happened the way they did. Washington, D.C. and the Federal Reserve cannot allow banks to go bankrupt. Because if they go bankrupt, then there's a whole lot of debt that then defaults. And what happens when debt defaults? That money supply is gone. It goes to the same place from whence it came. They came it came from nowhere, credit backed by nothing. And, that, and when that credit is defaulted upon, that money just disappears. If the Federal Reserve in Washington, D.C. did not act we would have had, we would have gone into a severe deflationary spiral. They did the only thing that they could do, which was to reinflate, to stop the deflation monster. The level of deflationary pressures in our economy today are so great that even after printing trillions of dollars 
and the government borrowing those dollars into existence through trillion dollar plus deficits over four years, our inflation level is still below 2%. Now that money does go somewhere, and it's sitting, most of it, sitting at the Federal Reserve. But it's this system that has led to our political culture. Why do we have student loan debt? We have to encourage people to borrow. GDP does not grow unless borrowing increases. Why do we have five, six, seven year car loans today? When I was a kid, four years was a long time for a car loan. Back in 1946, the amount of corporate debt in this country was virtually zero. Zero. Today, it's over 50%. And that is why they're playing this game of Jenga. Because what the Federal Reserve Act has done and what the Federal Reserve laws and how we create money has done has hollowed out our economy. Our economy started in the first 100 years, 100 plus, 25 years, based upon metal at various times, gold or silver. And that created a pretty solid economy, the original Jenga block. No one could come along and knock that. What has happened is, just as Russ is taking out a piece, a Jenga piece today, when the Federal Reserve came into existence, all that gold-backed debt was replaced by debt backed by fiat money, by Federal Reserve notes. So when they take it out, it's taking out good capital, and they're replacing it with debt on top, creating a completely unstable economy that has been completely hollowed out. And that's where we are today. This actually reflects how much capital was created in the first 125 years of this country. We went, and it took us another 100 years to hollow that out and borrow against the future. And we've hollowed out industry after industry, the manufacturing industries. I remember this. I'm from northeastern Ohio. Steel mills are big there. I saw repeatedly bankruptcies and companies coming in with leveraged buyouts to acquire those assets and then them going bankrupt again. This is nothing more than taking capital and replacing it by debt. That's what leveraged buyouts do. It's a hollowing out of our economy. And the system cannot change unless we change our monetary system. That's Charlie to move here. I have a chart up here. This is a graph of the stock market, the value of the stock market from 1792 when the first gold standard was put in place, actually a silver standard there, through today. Now this is not going to correlate to most, most graphs you would see of the value of the stock market because this is valued in ounces of gold. And so it shows you that we reached a peak in 1965 here, and then another secondary peak in 1999. And you can see that the first 100 plus years up to the founding of the Fed, roughly around 19, 1913, well this is 1965, 1900s, so I think 1928, so around here the Fed was created, right? We had, we had the Great Depression. So up until then, it was up and to the right in a, in a general manner. But then it got really crazy after the Federal Reserve. When you look at it, valued against an honest money, not Federal Reserve notes. My friends, what's going to happen is we will enter a deflationary depression. As this debt bubble deflates, money is destroyed. And the only thing that will change that is a fundamental change in how our monetary system works. We have gotten to the point where you cannot put on more debt. Because the key here is this hollowing out, and I said if you could pay off all that debt, you can never pay it all off because there's interest. Interest is not accounted for every time you borrow new money into existence. Where is that interest coming from? You have to borrow again to pay that interest. It's a debt that can never be repaid. Now, to inspire you, I want you to focus on a couple of things. Lenin, 
was said to have declared that the best way to destroy the capitalist system was to debauch the currency. Lenin, this is Robert Prechter speaking, Lenin was certainly right. There is no subtler, no surer means of overturning the existing basis of society than to debauch the currency. The process engages all the hidden forces of economic law on the side of destruction and does it in a manner which not one man in a million is able to diagnose. I've given you some information here. Hopefully you're able to diagnose it. The important thing that I want to motivate you to doing, and I talked a little bit this morning with, with Brad about this, there's not a single candidate that I know in the state of Colorado that knows what to do. What's going to happen is the next presidential election, most likely, you'll, we may have a candidate that says, let's eliminate the Fed, we go back on a gold standard or a silver standard. That's the person you want to vote for. The other, the other type of candidate would be the one that says, we need to take back the power to print our own money away from the Fed and give it to the Treasury. Then we'll have hyperinflation because they'll print money without having to borrow it into existence. That's what you need to watch out for. Some references for you to find out more information. Professor Antal Faketa, his student Keith Weiner, he, um, both of them blog. New Austrian School of Economics is where they come from. Too bad Brian's not here because I don't, I'm sure he doesn't understand this. Robert Prechter, I referenced, he does ElliottWave.com and also posts in Deflation.com. That's what's important. Nothing else matters. If we don't change our monetary system, there can be no change. You have to understand that. What happened in 2008, 2009 was the only thing that could have been done without a deflationary depression, a complete crash. So they kicked the can down the road, but they can't kick it much further. And pretty soon we'll have an economy that will collapse as this Jenga game will end up. Thank you.